Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. It's shrimp that literally rocks. Right now on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Tim Laird with Kevin Harnett in the Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs Kitchen Studio. And we're cooking with one of Kentucky's favorite chefs. Dallas McGarrity from the Fat Lamb and Portage House is here. He'll share his secrets, plus we'll shake up Tim's latest cocktail made with berries and bourbon. All of that and more right now on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Kevin Harden. This is the show that takes you behind the scenes and into the minds of the great chefs across the bluegrass. We have one of our favorites with us today, a chef with South Carolina in his roots and now Kentucky in his blood. He started in Louisville at Volare, and then he put Marketplace on the map. Now he's a chef and owner at two popular River City restaurants. The Portage House is in Southern Indiana and the Fat Lamb in Louisville's Highlands. Coming up, Dallas whips up his recipes from both spots and he shares the secrets so you can do the same thing at home. And before we get cooking, won't you say hello to my broadcast partner, my good friend, America's CEO, our Chief Entertaining Officer, Tim Laird. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Tim. Wow. Are you hungry? I'm hungry. But They're hungry. Designers. They are hungry. Wow. They are wild. They are wild. That's great. Great yeah. audience. I'll tell you, I'm excited and, and uh, I can't wait. Dallas McGarrity has been, a, he was one of our first guests, I understand. I think back to some of our very first shows, which goes back a long, long time. And uh, yeah, we, you can remember Dallas at Valare. Right. Marketplace just took off downtown in the uh, theater district there. And then now when you think of the Fat Lamb, which is just an excellent restaurant, and then the new Jeffersonville restaurant over in Indiana, the Portage House, this is incredible. Exciting. Yeah. To be so young, too. I know. Oh, my gosh. And I right? feel so old. But it's all good. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Let's uh, get started. You bet. Thank you, Kevin. I'll tell you what. It's a great day to be in Kitchen Studio because, as we said, we've got a great chef. Please welcome Dallas McGarrity. <laughs> good to see you guys. Great to have you here. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, amazing career, Dallas. It's it's phenomenal, and now uh, the Portage House is going to be uh, is on the map. Now it's amazing yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, it's uh, we've yeah we've been working really hard. <laughs> I, you have, yeah. And, and, and everybody loves the fat lamb. I mean, everybody talks about it. It's just got a great buzz about it, and people absolutely love it. And now tell us a little bit more about the Portage House too, because uh, you said that you can actually walk there if you park yeah. on this side. Of yeah, it. yeah. Well, we took over the Portage House not too long ago, and it was you know it's it's we've kind of kept the same vibe that we had before um, but it's right across the walking bridge so you can park on Louisville side and walk over to southern Indiana get the view of the river come sit on our patio enjoy food on the river which is just beautiful you know it's the perfect time of year for that and then you know you can walk back over and walk off what you ate so it's it's perfect it's perfect to get down there you know well it, what I like about what we're doing today is actually we're going to feature uh, foods from both restaurants we're going to have something from the fat lamb and we're also going to have some uh, items from uh, the portage house as well absolutely where do we want to start well I think we're going to start making our zucchini dish okay. at the fat lamb and um, I'm going to bring my, my chef de cuisine from fat lamb up and he's going to Help prepare this dish. All right. Excellent. And what's his name? So it's uh, his Brad Manier. And Brad. Yeah, all right. Been... Brad. Uh... So, so we're gonna start off with the zucchini. Um, this dish is kind of a, a it's kind of a, a summer Kentucky thing. You know, it's we, there's a lot of zucchini that grows in this region because of the weather and the way things grow here. Um, and we can get so much zucchini locally that I was like, well, we need to focus on that, you know, in the summertime. Right. Um, we do a lot of vegetarian at the Fatland. My wife is vegetarian, so if I don't do vegetarian well, I will be in trouble when I get home. <laughs> um, so, so it's a good reason why you've got yeah, some vegetarian dishes yeah, out there. Yeah, it's, it's a good, good thing to do. Um, but, yeah, so we take a nice zucchini locally, local zucchini, locally grown. Uh, just cut it in half. We get a nice hot cast iron pan, and we season the zucchini and sear it and get it nice and crispy on the inside of the zucchini. What's it um, seasoned with, uh, Chef? Uh, just salt and pepper. Well, that's my magic spice. Oh. Uh, it's, this, is, this is what we season things at the restaurant with. It's uh, uh, salt, pepper, a little granulated garlic, and some crushed red pepper. Excellent. You um, revealed the secrets to that. Because yeah, that, that's, that's the premise of this show is uh, a lot know, of times, well, no, that's a secret. Well, but, wait a minute. The show is Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. But all right, good.
Part of the flavor of the dish is getting that caramelization. You want to get that crispy kind of, uh, the Maillard reaction is what it's called. But it, it, it's what, like if you eat a grilled steak, that's kind of the flavor you get when you get that seared outside. And it's kind of, it's a, that's what people look for when they get a nice grilled steak, is that, that outside crust. I never knew and that was the Maillard effect. Yeah, Maillard, yeah. Wow. Maillard reaction. Kevin, how about right. that? Well, I spent a little time in my yard over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know it was the same thing. <laughs> Growing zucchini, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, whatever. <laughs> and I saw Chef uh, put a little bit of uh, seasoning on this side as on well. Side so as both well. sides get yeah. well seasoned. Basically, you want to treat this like a steak, you know? And that's kind of how we did it. Um, so the next thing we're going to make to go with this is pepernata. And this is something we use a ton of at the restaurant. It's a roasted red pepper, kind of almost like a relish. So you just take the roasted pepper that has been pre-roasted and you just roast it on a burner. Um, what, I, what I like to do is I like to take a, a whole red pepper, stick it on a burner, turn it on, and then just kind of move it around when it starts to char. When that happens, you put it in a bowl after it's charred all the way, wrap it with plastic wrap, and let it just sit for about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. And then you take that plastic wrap off and the skin peels right off. It just, it just, it just, it just comes off. right off, yeah. yeah. And you can take all the insides out and you have a nice roasted pepper. And, and what's amazing about that process too is how sweet that pepper becomes uh, after you roast it. I mean, it just brings out a lot of flavor. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely it does. We mix in a little uh, herbs, which is basically a little parsley, chopped parsley and some, uh, some rosemary. Um, the rosemary just adds that, that touch. So, and then we add a little, uh, little uh, lemon juice. Citratize it. Citratize now. <laughs> and then a little more uh, vinegar, actually. Vinegar, a little more acid. Um, and that's a, that's a reduction, a balsamic reduction. And extra virgin olive oil. And you kind of mix that together. Let it sit, preferably overnight. I mean, that can stay, that can stay in your fridge for a week. You know, it'll be fine. This is just chopped Julian Tuscan kale. You know, it's black kale, lacanato kale, Tuscan kale, dinosaur kale. There's a lot of names for it. Um, and we use it in a lot of dishes because you can change the flavor a lot. You can add garlic to it or you can add white wine to it or butter to it. It totally changes the flavor of, of what you're doing with the greens. And if you cook it like we're cooking it now, it's going to taste a lot like braised greens, like, you know, your grandma or whatever we make. And that's, that's awesome. It's comforting, you know. So we're gonna put a little, a little caramelized onion in here. Oh, beautiful! That with that garlic, caramelized ahead of time, which is yeah. that'll be a nice flavor to go with that too. Exactly. I'm gonna put a little bit of this uh, Tuscan kale right on top of that, mm. and you'll hear the pop. I hear the pop. That nice pop is kind of what you want. So, people do all kinds of stuff with kale. You know, you can roll it up like cabbage, and you know, cabbage rolls, and you can do all kinds of stuff with kale. Kale, yes. <laughs> and there's different kale. <laughs> So this is all I like to cook it. I like to keep it nice and clean and fresh. You know, it's like right. one of those not like wilted up. Yeah, it's it's slightly cooked, but it's it's still got a crunch factor. Very nice. You know, um, and I'll tell you, I so, love kale like this, and with those onions in there, a little bit of garlic, and that flavor. What we're gonna do? We're gonna plate this up here real quick. It's super super complicated plating, Tim. I don't know if you know. <laughs> Take notes, Even Take Kevin this. can do this. <laughs> I don't know, but it all seems very healthy to me. It is, it is. It is. Thank Beautiful. You. And so you just kind of put it on like that. Nothing too involved. Um, and then we take this right here, the sweet chili vinegar, and just kind of glaze over the top. So we can make this at home, just buy from the Asian the sweet chili and then add vinegar to it. Yeah, you can. You can make your own sweet chili too. See, it's super easy to make. Pepernata. Oh, I already forgot about the pepernata. The pepernata, right? Love the pepper. Gotta have the peppers, right? So. Just put a little bit. You don't want a ton because, you know, after it sits in this vinegar and it just kind of marinates in itself and just hands out. And this is, by, by the way, this has been marinating overnight, Kevin, so you know. <laughs> yeah. And so what we add next is a little bit of toasted ground almonds. And, and a little more crunch factor for the dish. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You like that. And then we got a little, uh, little lovely goat cheese. Beautiful. Crumbled. It'll, it'll help out, you know, with all the vinegar that we have going on. The different all the, layers all the flavors here. we have going on. Mm, yeah, we do. So, and then you got to wipe your rim every time you do that. And that's our dish, guys. This that is a wow. great chef. Looks great. Do you have more yeah. secrets coming up? Absolutely. But what are we talking about? We're going to do a little rock shrimp and grits. So wow. Yeah. A little low country coming. I like that. So. Shrimp that rocks. Right. Shrimp that rocks. And yeah. also, Kevin, I have a treat. 
the bourbon berry bounce. Oh. Great cocktail. Sounds <laughs> like the fun part of the show is yet to come. I wouldn't go anywhere. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. We'll come right back after this. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. Hi everybody and welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Kevin Hart and we've been cooking and hearing the secrets from Chef Dallas McGarity from the Fat Lamb in Louisville and the Portage House over in Jeffersonville. He's revealed the secrets to his roasted zucchini with sweet chili vinegar and he's going to rock out some shrimp and grits coming up. Don't miss that. It's the rock shrimp. But first, it's time to check in with Tim Laird. He's back at the old Forester bar mixing up something of his own. Tim? Kevin, I have the bourbon berry bounce. It's a delicious cocktail and easy to make. Starts out with a shaker of ice, ounce and a half of Woodford Reserve bourbon goes in, and for the berry part, a little bit of blueberry syrup. About a half ounce goes in. Now, at this point, we want to give this a good shake. Make sure that berry juice gets infused in all that Woodford Reserve bourbon. And then I'm going to strain this over a tall glass with ice. Then I'm going to top it off with a little bit of club soda. Finally, for a garnish, frozen blueberries. Boom. And there it is, the bourbon berry bounce. Cheers, Kevin. All right, thank you, Tim. We look forward to uh, not only seeing more drinks to come in future episodes, but in this very episode, after this next commercial break, Dallas McGarity's back up in the kitchen. He's going to reveal those secrets to the rock shrimp and grits when we come back on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Kevin Harnett alongside my good friend and broadcast partner Tim Laird. We're with Dallas McGarity and his crew from both the Fat Lamb and the Portage House. We are having fun today. Yeah. Tim's just whipped up a great cocktail. That looked delicious. It was. It was delicious, yeah. Kevin. They never make it back to the front of the room here, though, Tim. Uh, always testing for quality control. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great things about our show, and Dallas knows this so well, is that we're always Kentucky proud. And, you know, I grew up growing kale and zucchini and some of the things we featured, but not this kind of kale. Yeah, this is this is pretty unique. I mean, it's good stuff. It's a it's a little milder and less bitter than than the kale most people are used to. Um, it's called dinosaur kale or lacanado kale or black kale, and it's called dinosaur kale because it looks like dinosaur, you know, scales basically on the outside, dinosaur skin. In fact, you get a lot of it year round uh, up around northern yeah. Kentucky. Yeah, northern Kentucky. Uh, we use the Bluegrass Food Connection, and they kind of come down every week, you know, a couple times a week, and you know, we can get it when we can get it, and sometimes we can't, sometimes we can't, but we try our best to, you know. Well, I'm going to have my, my, my chef de cuisine from Portage House, Tim Piper, make some creamy polenta for you guys. Yeah, How exactly. long does that usually take, Dallas? So what? This takes about probably 15 minutes, 20 okay. minutes, something like that. So we'll start making the shrimp and grits sauce. Um, so over at Portage House, we use rock shrimp. Um, these come from the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. They're little, tiny, almost like lobster tails. So they're, they're shrimp still. They look a little different than your average shrimp. Um, they're actually shrimpy shrimp. They're shrimpy shrimp. <laughs> but, but I like the texture. <laughs> shrimpy but, shrimp. But, but also, they're very sweet. I, you know, I mean, I they think are. they're sweeter than the uh, larger shrimp. They are. They're a little sweeter. Um, I like the texture when you cook them a little better. They get more of a, it's more of a meatiness to it. So we're going to start this up with a little oil. With a little caramelized onions. Not a lot, just a little. God, I love, I love caramel. No, I love them. This, we, Even on pizza. Oh. Yeah, yeah, on anything, right? On cereal. cereal. Oh, no, don't. <laughs> don't do that. Man. Don't do that. I don't know how that would taste on my Cap'n Crunch. Yeah. <laughs> There's the <a> secrets <laughs> revealed. Yeah, right. Dallas yeah. likes caramelized onions on his cereal. My kids would be like, "What is this, Dad?" <laughs> yeah. So, so we kind of layer the flavors in this dish. You know, it's, that's part of the beauty of making this dish. You can layer the flavors, and it builds into the whole sauce of the dish. Um, so we take a little. Uh, Chopped cooked bacon. Ooh. Beautiful. We put that in. Um, and you can smell it already. I the love bacon it. and the onions kind of. Oh, what a combination. It permeates. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's, it's nice. 
So and then I'm gonna add a little chopped garlic. A little, not too much, just kinda to meld together with all this. Um, I add this last after adding those things in because this dish is gonna cook for a while, so you don't wanna overcook that garlic out of the, out of the dish. Um, once you kinda got that hot and sizzling, yep. not too hot, you don't want it too hot, you add your shrimp. Rock shrimp goes in. Oh. We're rocking here and rolling over here, you can see. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so how long does this cook? This, you want to cook until the shrimp is almost done, actually. Okay. I mean, you, yeah, this is, this is almost the, the final stage before you make it into a sauce. We do this every time we get an order for shrimp and grits. This is how we make it at the restaurant, too. So when you're like, man, my food's taking forever. Well, we're, we're cooking. <laughs> and that's the secret. There you go. We love sharing the secrets. We're going to let this cook during a commercial break, but when we come back, this will be about finished, and we'll check in with Tim over there as well. It's coming up on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Don't go away. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. Hi everybody, welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. We're cooking now. We are in the kitchen studio here at Bourbon Barrel Foods with Dallas McGarrity from the Fat Lamb and the Portage House and uh, the rock shrimp's been cooking through the commercial break. It looks so good. I'll tell you what. It I smells good smells too. smells incredible. And you can see it tightened up a little bit. <clears throat> it did. Like, you know, when, when the shrimp go in the pan, they're kind of relaxed and they start to cook, they firm up, the muscle starts to get tighter. Um, that's what you're looking for. When it starts to get to that point right there, is when we add a little more of our kale here, our All right. Bacchanato kale. Not too much. You just kind of, it adds some green to the sauce. It also adds a little structure to the sauce. So I kind of, when I do that, I flip it over. Mm -hmm. So I get all that fat from the bacon and the liquid from the shrimp. Kind of helps cook those greens and it absorbs that into the sauce. So see down here on the bottom of the pan, you got a little bit of that brown stuff. There's that fun. That's you're that fun. That's what you're looking for. Yeah, I have that in all my dishes. It's usually a little darker than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't call it fun. He call it burnt. Yeah, char. Blackened. <laughs> of that. He's into blackened food. Yeah. So, so we add the white wine, and you don't add too much. You just want to, you know, glaze the pan out. So when you do that, you take your your tongs, your spoon, whatever you're using to cook with. And you just scrape that stuff off the bottom. It comes right off, you know, just with no effort at all. Now make your sauce mm. taste delicious. Oh. So this is uh, half a pound of butter. I'm not going <laughs> to use that for the. I'm You're just not, saying. Wow. Well, Tim's hey, going to be disappointed. <laughs> yeah. So, but we're using a big lump of butter. I like that. So basically, I just put this in and swirl it around. Sure. But you want to take it off the heat just a touch, because if you keep it on there. What's going to happen is this butter is going to get too hot and it's going to break and your sauce is going to look all crazy and weird. It'll still taste good, but it won't be quite the same. So that's another secret. So take it off the heat a little lift bit. Lift it keep up stirring, and just kind of give it a and let stir. All the butter dissolve. And that's it. You just turn it and off. There it and is. You got a Boom. shrimp and grit sauce that is delicious. Delicious. Sure. Yeah, I would eat that every day. Oh, absolutely. Put that, you know, we'll plate up. A little creamy polenta coming out. Yeah, yeah. So. I like to take the polenta. Look at that. Put it right in the center. Beautiful. Here comes the star of the show. The rock star, I should the say. Star. The rock stars <laughs> of the show. It's the rock shrimp. And that goes right in the center. Wow. It just kind of falls right on top. And that's beautiful, beautiful food. It's gorgeous food. And that's yeah, it, guys. That's yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh, wow. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes we got a we got a local guy who grows pea sprouts for us. We like to garnish with pea sprouts, you know. End it with a little Kentucky Proud pop. Yeah, this is definitely Kentucky Proud. It's a uh, Groganica Farms actually. He grows a lot of yep. a lot of greens. It's uh, aquaponic stuff, and we kind of just do this right here to make it pretty. So, and that's there it is. yeah, that's our, that's our finished product. Touches. Yeah, I love it. So, so Dallas, tell us uh, the hours and what when you're open at both places. Awesome. Yeah, so the Fat Lamb, we're open for lunch, and it starts at 11.30, and then dinner starts at 5 o'clock at the Fat Lamb, and it's Tuesday through Saturday, and Portage House, we're open Tuesday through Saturday as well, open at 4, so it's a little different. Um, uh, Saturday, we do lunch at Portage House as well, so it's nice to come sit on the river and eat lunch and yeah. have a couple cocktails. and Rolling on the river with rock shrimp. <laughs> Can you imagine sitting outside, having a nice dish like that? I love it. Dallas, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, guys. guys.
We also say thanks to Kentucky Proud. You see so many of their great products used in so many of the chefs across uh, not only Louisville, but across the Commonwealth, parts of Bowling Green and Lexington. Big thanks to Tim Laird, my broadcast partner. We'll see you next time on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs.